Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to share some simple and elegant beveled sentiments embossed cards. This is using the beveled sentiment A2 card front collection. There are four different sentiments here that I'm going to be using. We have hello, a gift for you, and then we have thanks and happy birthday. So these are very, very simple embossing folder and the sentiments on the front of them have a bevel to them when you emboss them and they create some fantastic cards. You can get as simple or as complicated as you would like with them. So I'm going to create four cards in this video, one with each of the embossing folders, and my technique is going to start very simple to start, and I'm just going to get progressively harder. Not that they're hard techniques in any way, shape, or form, but I'm just going to show you some different ways that you can step it up or that you can keep it super simple. For most of my cards, the card front is going to be done using this Barely Peach cardstock from Spellbinders. The one that doesn't use it, it'll be obvious you'll know that it's not the barely peach card stock but you'll see when we get to that and I'm starting off with the hello beveled sentiment so I had an a2 piece of cardstock I embossed it with my spellbinders platinum six machine and then I trimmed it down to four inches by five and a quarter inches now I did that afterwards because it was a little bit easier to make sure that my sentiment was centered by having that bit of wiggle room and then um, cutting it down afterwards. If you're confident with your placement, you could cut it down to the size that you want it to be before embossing it, but I do like to be able to cut it down afterwards. I'm doing some light ink blending with the help of my Alta New Sticky Mat. My first color there was Saltwater Taffy, and now I'm using some Abandoned Coral. I'm using some large Spellbinders ink blending brushes. These are great for getting either light ink blending or getting heavy ink blending, depending on your preference, but they're perfect for doing backgrounds like this. The last card here, or the last color here that I'm using is Crackling Campfire. It's a little bit too orange for my liking, but you can't tell as much because of the fact that I have that saltwater taffy and abandoned coral on there. There just wasn't a third that had a little bit more of a pink tone to it. So I'm taking another piece of Barely Peach cardstock and I want to do a sentiment with the Anemone Glimmer Blooms die. I'm using the Friend sentiment die that's in that set. And I want the Friend or the sentiment itself to be that ink blended color. And then I couldn't decide if I wanted the shadow to be the Barely Peach cardstock or white cardstock. So at first I took my die off to not die cut it and then I decided to do one out of the Barely Peach as well as the white so I could lay it on my card base to see which one I liked best. This is an easy way to do it. It doesn't take a ton of cardstock and that way you can see exactly which the look that each one is going to give you to be able to, start to decide what's best for the look that you're going for. And I end up deciding that one of them is going to work on this card and then the other one I use for the next card so nothing goes to waste. I'm just using a white card base and I'm gluing everything down with Barely Art Glue. I have it in a nice fine bottle. It makes it easy for doing little tiny die cuts like that friend sentiment or large backgrounds like this embossed background. So with that embossed background on my card base. I put an acrylic block on there just to hold everything nice and flat, freeze up my hands to keep working on other things. Now that I have my friend sentiment out of the die, I can lay it on the shadow and then be able to see which is going to work best for the look that I'm going for. And really it doesn't matter too much because we've got the white around from the card base or we've got that barely peach at the top of our light ink blended background here. So neither one is right or wrong. It's just whether you want it to be a little bit more prominent or a little bit less prominent. Now I did some super simple ink blending here um, because I just wanted a little bit of an ombre look. I wanted that hello to be somewhat subtle um, and I love the way it looked. I love the simple simplicity of it. There's nothing too complicated here. And this would be easy to create a bunch of cards like this in different colors. I'm using the same color scheme for the cards in this video, but it'll work with any color scheme. The next one I'm going to be using is the A Gift For You Beveled Sentiment. So I have my cardstock in here and I'm going to tape it in place with some Best Ever Craft Tape. And then I'm going to do some inking on the embossing folder. So first I'm using the Saltwater Taffy 
closing that embossing folder and I'm running it through the machine. I'm gonna create a similar ombre look as my first card. However, because I'm applying the ink directly into the embossing folder instead of ink blending right on the cardstock, the beveled sentiment, the a gift for you, is not going to be inked. It's only going to be the background. Now, the one thing to note, because these sentiments are beveled, the um, slope to them is very, very slight, especially when at the beginning or right where the bevel starts. So when you do your ink or do your inking on your embossing folder, sometimes you get a little bit of a ridge of ink on those edges and they kind of seep up when you do your ink blending. So, or when you do your embossing. So it's really hard to get pristine edges on this background. In order to help it try to get clean edges, I tap my ink pad rather than rubbing it on that background. Cause if you rub it on that embossing folder, that edge of the ink pad kind of gets a buildup of ink around the edges of those sentiments. And then I use my brayer to soften the edge so I don't have any harsh lines. I off screen, I did a sample where I did it with an ink blending brush and tapped the edges of the ink to soften it. But because those bevels were so shallow, it the brushes from the brush or the bristles from the brush pushed into those sentiments. And you could see on the one that I just brought on the screen that I did not have pristine sentiments in any way, shape or form. I was getting a little bit of the color of ink from that ink blending brush trying to soften those lines. So the brayer definitely helped, but if you look really closely at it, I'm not sure it shows up really well on the screen. You will see, um, a little bit of that ink seeping up the bevel. I couldn't think of, or I couldn't find a way that prevented it completely. I still love the way that it turned out. And when you look at it as a whole, you get some nice clean um, sentiments there. But just know that if you're having an issue with the ink seeping up the bevel or not getting pristine lines, that's likely what is causing it. So I'm using some Barely Peach cardstock here for a mat that is cut to four and an eighth inches by five and three eighths. And then my embossed piece here was cut down to four inches by five and a quarter. Once again, using that acrylic block in between adding layers just to hold everything down nice and flat. And for this card, I'm going to use that friend sentiment again. Once again, the actual friend part is ink blended to match the dark part of the cardstock. And then for this one, the um, shadow to it is that barely peach cardstock. And then I just put it on top of one of the words and I think you can still read what the sentiment is. Um, but you don't necessarily have to add that extra sentiment to the front if you don't want to. I like the look of it. I think it adds a little bit of extra dimension and changes it up just a tiny little bit. But if you wanted it to be plain on that background, you absolutely could do that. And then for the next cards, I'm going to add a little bit to those backgrounds. So I'll show you some or share some ideas of ways to step it up. So here we have two ombre backgrounds, one very simple ombre on or ink blended on that embossed background. And then the second one ink blended on the embossing folder. So there's no ink on our actual sentiments. For the third one, I'm going to use the Thanks beveled embossing folder. And I'm using some printed paper from the Bayfair paper pad. This was in the card making kit. You can also get the paper pad on its own, I believe. These papers are fairly thin. So this embossing doesn't have a lot of, there's, the cardstock isn't very thick. If you want it to be thicker, I would suggest gluing it to, um, a piece of cardstock before embossing it, but I didn't and I didn't have any issues with it. So I'm just very careful when I am using it, when I am gluing it down. And for this one, I'm just using some black memento ink to ink up the back of that cardstock. So then we're gonna have a sentiment that has a print on it because of that printed paper and then a black background. And I repeat the inking of the embossing folder. When you're using dye inks on an embossing folder, because it's plastic, they kind of like to bead up on it. So I find that the inking on the embossing folder has to be done a few times in order to build up that ink and get a nice solid background. I end up doing it, I think four times for this background. The last time I'm just concentrating that ink on the center and between the letters of the thanks sentiment. Typically when I'm doing these backgrounds, usually three times is the perfect amount. Um, but like I said, this one I did one extra layer just in the center of those letters. 
You can do as many layers or as few layers as you want. We're just nice, trying to get a nice solid background here. Once I'm done that, I can take my sentiment and I can cut it down for my card. That paper pad is six by six and I just cut a piece that was four inches by six inches. Rather than cutting anything out of the length, I knew I was going to be um, needing to trim it down anyways and I figured we might as well trim after the fact. To add a little bit more of that ombre look that I have on the front of my card, I put it on my alt new sticky mat and then I'm using the saltwater taffy. No, I'm using the abandoned coral and just doing a little bit of light ink blending on the bottom of those letters. It just gives them a little bit more interest. It adds that coral color. There's a little bit of that coral color in the print, but I wanted to incorporate it just a little bit more and I think it really enhances those letters. So taking it off of the sticky mat is where you really have to be careful because that paper is a little bit thinner. For my mat, I'm going to use that same Barely Peach cardstock and I'm going to ink blend it with that abandoned coral ink pad just so that it coordinates a little bit better with the color that I just did the ombre ink blending on um, the letters. And then I have a few die cuts here that I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending with as well. So these were cut out of Barely Peach cardstock. This is the Floral Spray die set. This die set coordinates beautifully with the Bayfair card kit. And I'm only wanting teeny tiny flowers. So it has some tiny flower die cuts in that um, set. So it was perfect for adding a little bit of florals here. These flowers were die cut out of Peach Sorbet cardstock just to give them a little bit more darkness. It's just a little bit darker than the Barely Peach cardstock. And then the Abandoned Coral ink blending in the center is just gonna give them a little bit of visual dimension. The greenery from these dies are for the greenery. I die cut some Fern cardstock. And then I also have some florals from this die set that I die cut out of the ink blended cardstock that I die cut the Friend sentiment out of. By doing that, I have some flowers that are a little bit darker and they're already ink blended. There was no point in doing it out of the Barely Peach and then ink blending afterwards if I already had some cardstock that would work. So my mat here, I'm cutting it down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm cutting the thanks um, background to five and a quarter inches by four inches. So for the width way here where I have it, I find the easiest way to kind of gauge where the center is, is my ruler on, or that clear guard, the edge of that is about the two inch mark. So that I put that in between my letters in this or in the center of the letters and then cut from there. The top and the bottom is a little bit easier to see where the center point is and to trim it down so that it's nice and even. So when I'm gluing this down, I'm using that same Barely Art glue and I'm making sure that there's some glue in the center of the letters where the there's some recess that's going to be um, making contact with my card base. For this particular one, I'm using the beautiful sentiment from the Wonderful Script Sentiment die set just for something a little bit different. You could easily use the same friend that I've used on the first couple cards. I just wanted it to be a little bit different and have an, another alternative. And I'm using the Wonderful Script Sentiments as well as that Anemone Glimmer Blooms sentiment because I love the font on it. Another die set would work as well if you wanted something that had a little bit of a different font to it. I really love the look of that scripty font with the bold block letters from the beveled embossed backgrounds. Um, it's one of those things that's personal preference. If you don't like a script sentiment like that, another or more bold one would work as well. But I do want to make sure that you can see the embossed sentiments behind there. So these are the other flowers that I'm using. These were ones that were die cut out of that, the scraps of that ink blended cardstock that I die cut, the friend die cut out of. And I have the um, stem from it. That's from the floral spray die set as well. So all of these florals are from that same die set and they coordinate with the florals or the floral print in the printed paper that I use for the embossed background. So I'm gonna put that beautiful sentiment in the center right across the A and the N because I know I want my floral spray to go a little bit up on the left and a little bit down on the right. And by putting that in the center, it gives me the room to do that. I tuck my stem behind some of the letters so that I don't see the stem edge. And then I just tuck in my flowers as well as some of the leaves. So I'm gonna do one spray towards the top 
left, one spray towards the bottom right, and then I have a bunch of those tiny flowers there. I'm going to put a couple at the bases of those sprays, and then I'm going to put a couple in another, in two different areas. Now, I typically like to do floral clusters with odd numbers, but I didn't think there was enough room for a third spray. I probably could have gotten away with it, but in my mind there wasn't a place where it was going to look right so i end up having two other clusters of flowers on that beautiful sentiment if you're like me and like odd numbers um, you might want to add an one more cluster just to make that odd number i really liked it the way it was with just the two clusters as well as the fact that i had used up all of the flowers that i had already die cut and um couldn't die cut some more because I had run out of some of the cardstock, but it works the way it is. So this is just one of the ways that you can step up your embossed or your beveled sentiment backgrounds. And these florals will work with whatever sentiment. Florals are not um, just for one occasion. So I love the fact that they can work with any sentiment. You could use them on that hello or on that a gift for you one. They would be beautiful on that as well. To add just a touch of sparkle, I'm just putting a dot of stickles in the centers of those tiny little flowers. It's just going to give a little bit of a different texture and give a, set, a, a center to those flowers. There are dyes in that um, floral spray die set that you could die cut and put in the center, but I knew I was going to use the stickles because I like them for floral centers. I like that little bit of sparkle there. For my last card here, I am using the Happy Birthday Beveled Embossing Folder. I'm using that Barely Peach cardstock again. And when I was doing the inking on my background there, I accidentally got a little bit of a smudge on the front of that Barely Peach. So I flip it over before folding my embossing folder in half and then putting it through the machine. So once again, I'm gonna do this a few times to make sure to build that ink up. And I'm also tapping my ink pad and not, um, not rubbing it on that background because I don't want the ridges of the sentiments to get that buildup of ink that's gonna bleed up the happy part. So I'm gonna do this a couple times again, build up that ink and you can see that I got impatient and started rubbing that ink on there. The thing with tapping the ink pads on there is you get squares from the edges of the ink pad. So I will typically rub when I'm putting ink on my embossing folders in order to avoid that. And I will typically rub it one way and then rub it the other way, just so that I don't have streaky lines, but I really like to avoid the getting squares of ink on there. For this particular background, there wasn't really a way to totally avoid that. I do, I do rub a couple times just to kind of get rid of the um, obvious ones or the worst ones. I want to step up or I want to do something else to this background. So I don't want my background or the ink on my background to mess it up. So I'm using an embossing powder tool. What I want to do is use a background stamp and I want to stamp and emboss a print over top of my inked background. So by adding that embossing powder tool, it just helps that embossing powder to stick to the Versamark ink that I'm going to be stamping on there instead of the ink that I just ink blended on there. Now another way to do this would be to take that embossed background off, heat set it, and then put it back on so that that avoided the ink as well. So that's another way to do it if you don't have an embossing powder tool or don't necessarily want to use them for this. So now that I have stamped that background onto my embossing folder, put it through my machine, I can put my embossing powder on top of that. Now you're only limited with the size of your background. This one was a little bit narrow. So you can see it didn't go all the way to the edges of my embossed background. That's okay, we're just gonna cut our mat down or cut our piece down a little bit more and have a little bit wider mat showing. With that embossing powder on there, I can heat emboss that background and you can see we can still see that coral color behind there, but now we have a beautiful gold floral embossed on the front of it. I did a floral print because I thought it would work well with the florals that I used with the last card you could use whatever background stamp you want you could use a plaid you could anything would work here um, you're basically limited to whatever background stamps you have but it's a great way just to add a little bit of extra texture to that background now i embossed this here but you could stamp it with just distress ink and then have 
a Distress Inked background with a stamped print on top of that, that would work as well. I just liked, liked the extra detail and the extra dimension you get with the embossing, and I thought it would step it up a little bit. And that's why I chose to do that. But you could also, like I said, just stamp it with Distress Ink and just have kind of a printed background. So I'm using some scrap paper here to hide the letters below it. I'm doing that same ombre inking just because I really like the look of it. I think it steps up those letters just a little bit and makes them pop a little bit more. It's one of those steps that you don't necessarily have to do if you don't want to do. I just love the look of it. And then I used a dry cloth just to wipe down that um, background because doing that ink blending you could see a little bit of that coral ink on top of my gold embossing and if I didn't do that there was a good chance I was going to put my hand on that ink that's on top of the embossing and that ink is never going to dry and I could smudge it so the easiest way to avoid that is to just wipe that down and clean off my front here. I have another mat with that barely peach cardstock that mat is cut to four inches by five and a quarter and my happy birthday piece here is cut to three and three quarters by five inches. For this card I'm using some gift die cuts from the Delivering Joy Slay die set. Any gift die cuts would work. This is the basically the first one that I found and I really love the bow that's in this one and I'm doing my gifts in the Barely Peach cardstock and for the bows and the ribbons around the gifts, I'm using different finishes of gold cardstock from the gold treasured cardstock pack. So I have one that's mirror cardstock, one that's glitter, and one that's pearl. It coordinates beautifully with the gold embossed print in the background, but I love the fact that I have a few different textures there. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. Now I kept my color palette super simple here and kept just the golds with the peaches. You could change it up if you wanted something that was going to pop a little bit more or be a little bit more bold. You could use different colors of gifts and every single one of these cards, you could do them with different color palettes as well. So I love the fact that the backgrounds are generic enough that you can really customize with your color palette and get the look that you want. So I have three gifts here. This particular die set, there are three different sized gifts and um, they filled out the area where I wanted them enough that I didn't have to cut any more, but you could certainly cut more if you wanted to. I just used the cross or the ribbon piece on each one of the gifts and then trimmed it down. And then I'm going to add the bow when that gift part is on the card so that I don't have to transfer it after. And I can really place the ribbons exactly where I want them to go on the front of my card. Once I'm done that, I can put my acrylic block on there just to hold everything down flat while it's drying. There's a really tiny die cut for the center of the bow, and I use a jewel picker in order to pick that up and put that on the center of the bow. It's much easier than trying to hold it with your fingers and being able to see to be able to place it properly. Now I did put a bow on each one of those gifts. I only put it on one on the right and one on the left. So there's one on the right side that doesn't have a bow to it. You could easily put it on all three if you wanted to, but I didn't think it was absolutely necessary. These specialty cardstocks from the Gold Treasure cardstock pack, they die cut beautifully. So even teeny tiny die cuts like the ones to make this bow, they die cut through them absolutely gorgeous. So you don't have to worry about having trouble die cutting those cardstocks. So here are the four cards that I created for this video. You can get really, really simple, as I said at the beginning, or you can get a little bit more complicated. Now, I have a favorite for sure, and it's that thanks one. I absolutely love the um, vibrancy, the dramatic difference between the background and the front. I'm curious if you have a favorite, post it down in the comments below. I'm just curious what it is. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time you spend with me, and I hope you have a fantastic day.